This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wrestling Mayhem Show 526 Tuesdays. We talk about professionalized wrestling or fake underground re- uh, fighting. Who knows? Either way, uh, we got a crew with us to talk about that. <laughs> Some more real than others. Uh, so, first of all, on the line, back with us two weeks in a row. Man, the Riz of Riz that's Plays a, Games. That's a record right now, isn't it? That's is a record. I love dancing and Lee Moriarty in the background. That was perfect. Oh, yeah. Switch over going on. There he is, right? Oh, wait. Yep, there, there, is, is, there, right is, there he is. There he is. all around. He's got mm-hmm. stuff going on. There he is. I was looking at the Twitch chat. I'm like, where's my arm? Where's my hand? I'm not playing <laughs> right why, why is nothing lining up? I don't get this right now. Also with us, uh, doing a twofer on podcast tonight because he also helped fill in since everybody apparently went to the <laughs> hospital today on Awesome Cast. Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast with us. i glad to be back on having the. Uh, the block on tonight. That's right, full <laughs> block. I try not to make anybody sit in a chair for as long as I do on Tuesday nights, <laughs> yeah. but Dave's apparently all about it. He's apparently got a much more comfortable chair, which has got to be easy because I have an Armageddon uh, folding chair from uh, uh, Melon Ooh. Arena, so I'm sitting yeah, on Batista's. Is that just, from like 2009? Yeah, something like that. I'm sitting on Batista's face all night. Uh, but uh, also with us, uh, <laughs> no, no adequate segue I can give him is... <laughs> Is deathmatch referee extraordinaire George Ross is with us back? I think for the first time since Mayhem Mania. Been quite a yeah. It's probably been about when was that December? Probably January. something like that. Yeah. Uh, also, also no stranger to things that are underground. So it's kind of a perfect timing to have you on this week. Indeed. So, uh, but this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We can find this and other episodes. The Monday Mayhem Warriors podcast returned last night. I know. I said on hiatus until further notice. It was a week. That's fine. But uh, we, we had Mad Mike back on the show. We had uh, Mainstream Matt on the show uh, because we had to talk about what Raw was about. <laughs> and also, we had to follow up because we all had watched Wrestling Society X on Friday night in an uh, uh, impromptu uh, watch-along that we did. Uh, you should, too. It's on YouTube. Um, well, our, our watch along is on Facebook, uh, but the Wrestling Society X is on YouTube. You don't have to buy the DVDs for 20 bucks like Mad Mike and I did. Uh, so just putting that out there. But you, What episode did you watch? We watched the guest all, host? No, we watched all 10. Oh. No, no, we watched all 10. <laughs> we watched all 10. So it was about six and a half, we started, about six and a half, seven hours? We started after eight o'clock and we were done by like 1130. Um, oh, that's right. They're a half hour long. They're like, they're like twenty minutes a piece. It's amazing. Oh, okay. It's amazing. You just just hit and play. Just just go. It's three, like three of the four discs, and then there's tons of extras. There's Mickey Knuckles, Knuckles death match stuff. A bunch of IWA South and Shimmer matches. Uh, it's it's there's some shit on this DVD. It's pretty fucking awesome, actually. <laughs> so, anyways, plus there's like two or three uh, commentary tracks for each episode. And then like there's a view and, and promos that they never released that were going to go to season two and talked about the stuff they were going to do with season two of this. It's it, it's chef's kiss. It's it's like, like random wrestling awesomeness. Anyways, anyways, we'll be able to touch about that a little bit later because I think I'm the only one that watched it out of this group here. Uh, so wait, um, wait, like ever or just in that? Yeah, also uh, probably ever because they didn't no, stick around. I, but what I've. I loved that show when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, oh, God, you're dating me. Uh, <laughs> I want to find the episodes of this show when it was on because I know I watched it. But, but anyway, I got to get through the rest of the stuff. I don't stuff. think we talked about Wrestling it. Wrestling Mayhem Show, it will open 2007, early 2007. So, you know, for context, we would have oh. been, we been fresh into year two of the show. Um, but what the hell are we doing? You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Like I said, the other shows are on there. We're looking to bring back the Indie Mayhem Show as well. I know it's on a little bit of a, hi- of a hiatus. Everybody's been busy or not doing things or doing too many things. It's been nobody's in between that we can just say, hey, would you like to just talk about your wrestling with us? Uh, but anyways, uh, you can also drop us a line at the email address. Good time. Wow. Good time. 
<laughs> good times at wrestling mayhem show dot com. Uh, my, my good times as well not as really you gotta today. work on that 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on the Twitter Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook page and group and of course following us on all of those because we are streaming every Tuesday live at 9pm Eastern Time or other things like our Monday night show uh, sometime after 11 o'clock or our watch alongs uh, like we did on Friday night like I mentioned with Wrestling Society X uh, and whatever other crazy stuff that we do uh, that we come up with you can check all of that out if you're checking us out live right now please hit a favor hit a like hit a hit a hit a a frowny face i don't care hit a share button hit a watch party whatever gets it in front of more people to join us here on the tuesday nights and join the wrestling party uh bobby fj town likes your x-men shirt over there so oh sweet (laughs) and uh also thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our (laughs) friends that are supporting the show including at our fan of the show level bo diggity Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Team Hammerfist. At the Poppy Club level, Bradley Brothers, Dave Ponder, Daniel Towery, and Tina Keys. And at the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy and Cal Turner. And at our manager level, our friends at OccupyProWrestling.com and Farnsworth Investments. Thank you so much. Everybody is supporting the show. And you guys can support the show too at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you so much for all the support, especially through all these weird times the last several months. So, uh, everybody Everybody's talking about last night's Raw, Raw Underground, or the state of WWE, or the state of the AEW. It, it seems like a lot of things are new or in flux, and, and and like we're in another shifting point of of things being figured out here because they're not going great for some people uh, uh, that should be on top right now, right? Um, uh, I, who we talked, uh, I think, rather extensively about Raw Underground uh, as a uh, first um, impressions shortly after Raw went off air last night with the other guys. So, so I'll leave it to you guys. Like, what were your thoughts on this Raw Underground concept going on last night, uh, uh, Dave? Let's go with you because Riz, I know you have some backstory on this. Uh, yeah, honestly, I mean, I looked at it after the fact. I unfortunately had other things to do. Mm-hmm. Wild World was on. Yeah, I, which I heard because I, I asked Ruth and I said, um, so did you watch it? She said, yeah, and uh, no, she wasn't overly positive <laughs> with it. But again, now, it, maybe if you're an MMA fan, maybe you'll like it. I don't know. No, obviously, no, looking at Riz. Um, but also, from what I caught up on, the three guys who came in and kind of owned the place afterwards was someone who lost the match a couple hours earlier against Apollo Crews and a guy who was distracted by ninjas <laughs> to lose his 24 seven title, which I'm assuming they did that because you can't be a badass real quote unquote real fighter going around with the, um, you know, the toy 24 seven championship. It works great for truth mm-hmm. and it'll work for Zazawa. But if you're like, I'm so bad. I can beat out people. I have a legitimate collegiate background, which hey, Sheldon really does. I mean, he's an amazing athlete. I mean, they all are, but you know, I mean, he has, he has a legitimate wrestling background. You can't go in with the 24 seven into a fight club and, yeah, right. and pull it off. Right. So, and, and yeah. it's really strange because the guard guarding the building or guarding <laughs> the, the entrance was the tall ninja from the beginning? I didn't say what was it? Of just Zawa's intim- clan. intimidating the intimidating the coffee guy. Like what? It, it seemed like a weird it, thing. It, it, yeah. <laughs> and and I'm agreeing with Bobby and Chad. If if you want to watch MMA, watch MMA. Mm-hmm. I want to watch professional. I want to see fake people wrestling. And you know, you know, you know what I mean. You know, and honestly, it's one no, of the reasons I, do. I don't watch MMAs because I really don't want to watch people actually hurt each other. The, do you, you like know? the Steiner brothers? I, I, What's well, that? okay. Well, yeah. I, I would yeah. say on uh, uh, to go out of their way to hurt each other on purpose for the, you know, it's not a matter of we're going to put on a wrestling show, but I want to make sure you're unconscious in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we'll hug and shake afterwards. It, it just kind of makes me uncomfortable, you know. But it, to, to each their own, you know. If you want to do it, that's great. But I want to watch wrestling, and 
I want to watch good wrestling, and that's why I normally don't watch Raw or SmackDown that much. <laughs> right, right, right. It, it, it seems weird. Yeah, it, it, apparently no one else is either. <laughs> Uh, Riz, Riz, you had you had some thoughts on this, and I know, uh, much like a lot of Twitter, I think you this seemed almost too familiar to you. I, I liked it when it was called the Crucible. <laughs> so, I, and I saw this uh, going around a lot. I'm like the Crucible, the Crucible. Then I saw jokes about you mean yeah. the Salem witch trials and all this stuff, and I was and so no. so I, I I glommed from so, Twitter what this was about. Explain mm-hmm. the Crucible uh, uh, to me. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. Tell me if you heard this before. Are you about was, to explain Fight Club? It's an, it's an underground training facility training facility inside a wrestling training facility run by a wrestling personality. This feels like a Russian doll of training facilities. And the the matches were there's yeah, there's pin, submit or throw them out of the ring. And oh. there were no ropes. Oh no, I just found it. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, that is definitely very familiar. With that people on the side. the exact same <laughs> like, situation. What is this? So they just did... And this is in Chikara? And, and you know what? Um, first I'm going to say, uh, and I should have said this, but I should preface by saying, my Quackenbush fucking sucks. Yeah. Next... Um, Oof. but uh, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at that last night after the, after the fact, after watching the, after watching the game and going back to seeing what everybody was talking about. And the first thing I said was, this is, this is the crucible. And it was, and it wasn't like a year. It wasn't a year. Uh, when we say okay, everything's up for ga- uh, for grabs. Everything's this, this, good. This video I'm watching this is was, from fre- the end of February. Yeah, this was like clear. a few months ago. And, and and to be clear, like it was also mentioned somewhere along the line in my readings that supposedly the fir- this is from an episode of the Chikara Action Arcade uh, show that was running, yeah. um, I, I believe, on IWTV, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, that had been presented to WWE for consideration of including on the network. Yeah. So, like that's that's kind of that's damaging. Shady that's shit. That's yes, yes. <laughs> like um, uh, it, it's just that uh, it kind of hurts. Plus, it, it's not it, it, it it's it's slimy. It's not even like the same. And I, I I even talked to one of my friends who is was really big into Shakara herself, and we were going back and forth about it and how. That I think the Shakara the, the Shikara stuff the the Crucible that took months mm-hmm. bef- behind the scenes mm-hmm. behind everything happening but behind you know having people train to do something like this to have people do this to have people do that they built a story that actually made this look and feel. Like it should happen, and it feels like that happens separately, doesn't it? Because this crucible thing happened over here on Raw, and we've been getting these training montages with uh, uh, Thatcher over on on NXT mm-hmm. that kind of feel like they should fit over here, and it's it's they're just all going in separate directions. Yeah. So, uh, so that is so now you know I got angry. <laughs> when you hear you people yelling about the crucible on Twitter. The next time Raw Underground gets brought up or shows up next week, if it comes back, if it even and, comes back, and the best part is, like, I was wa- I was reading uh, wrestling Twitter <laughs> while watching the end of Raw, and uh, Sonny Defarge, Sonny D, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> he's his, his line was used. And, and again, this is a generic line mm-hmm. that mostly everybody uses. And it just says, business is booming. And I'm like, like everything just lined it up. That's something they said on there. Okay. Yeah, it just lines up as... Well, well related, there's EC3 <laughs> also had a line of Instagrams mm-hmm. where he had shots from the Raw Underground next to, if you saw his kind of underground Fight Club video... When he redebuted his new look and everything, 
about the new narrative and then he's seeing like in the closed captioning like like the narrative of something of the u.s championship or something was mentioned Mm -hmm. like there was like all these other little points that he pointed out of wow doesn't this look familiar so i mean it's and it's also could be it feels like a lot of people are going to this you know there is all kinds of uh you know uh uh, this underground promotion vibe i don't know (coughs) fight underground Um, (laughs) uh lucha underground uh you know things like that and uh and 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 i know i know it it has been noticeable that other the word underground has popped up a lot in the last i'd say two months versus what it was even when lucha underground was a thing i i would have had a little tiny more morsel of a respect for it Mm -hmm. if it wasn't handled by shane mcmahon yeah that seems that out of we we said last night what is Shane the man has been sitting around for four months unable to do anything because of COVID has way too much money and what does what somebody do when they have way too much money and way too much time on their hands get in trouble human <laughs> close human cockfighting uh so so okay. George um you basically run in an underground line <laughs> yourself with the kind of wrestling you do um I, and you've seen images and caught up with this on Twitter uh, uh, of course mm-hmm. well, what did you think of Raw Underground. Um, honestly, the one thing that I saw a lot of that kind of made sense was Brawl for All. Like, it was kind of like a redone Brawl, like a, like a more modern take on Brawl for All, just not in front of, like, the live crowds in the arenas. Um, but having seen that Crucible clip, um, the thing that it reminds me of is, do you remember that one, like, it was that, that one staged karate combat show that was on Fox in like the late 90s, early 2000s? Yes. Oh. It was called like yes. WXMAC Masters oh, or something like that. Yes, yeah. yes. Wow. I do remember that. I wow. do remember I'm, that. I'm waiting, yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to bring out the big cage, like the like the Thunderdome cage that WCW <laughs> used to have, and then like they hit the they hit the the sides and they get electrified or whatever. Like, like <laughs> Well, no, now we're going to our wrestling society X talk, I think. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> with that. yeah, but no, like it just like I can appreciate the sort of what they're going for, especially like during the pandemic. It seems like, you know, everything's had to sort of operate on like an empty arena basis. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to know, like you have to know somebody to be able to even get into the show. Like, And it seems like, so it, my issue comes with and this is something that we talked with, with the wrestling society X um, and, and, and some other properties and cinematics like sometimes things like the cuts are too quick like it feels if you're trying to be mma you're definitely not shooting it like mma right shooting it like a wrestling you're, you're, you're shooting, shooting like a wwe well, show well you're not even shooting like a wrestling show because the, the shots are almost uh, too quick like right? a wwe show where the, the zoom in doesn't actually make sense there yeah yeah <laughs> It's it, and fifty nine cuts in a minute and a half. Yeah, it's it, and then, yeah. then inexplicably there's a there's a there's a hard cam in your underground show, um, <laughs> and then random shots of dancing ladies. Uh, what yeah. did what did somebody said? Uh, um, well, they certainly got the sexy witches from the movie Crucible, though. Uh, yeah. Says Bobby yeah. of J Town. Uh, so there's that. Uh, it, so it it's it it seemed it just seemed awkward. It came off awkward. There was good moments. Ray Rowe kicking ass. I thought was great. Um, I I don't know what to make of poor that big guy that they tried to make in an hour to get squashed um <laughs> so it, 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 it it's what the one with the dreads yeah the one yeah yeah um yeah. um also i need to send you an article about the term dreadlocks uh so oh, <laughs> uh, pp yeah. smooth yeah uh yeah. but uh locks uh but locks learning learning um yeah. but uh yeah it, it just it seemed the whole thing just seemed peculiar and not exciting to me. Kind of a what the fuck is this? More the you know more than there's a oh what the fuck is this? But this was more like what the fuck is this? Right? Yeah, it was yeah. louder. It was louder when you knew, like when you've seen it a couple months ago. In yeah. A- yeah. Yeah. I've heard people. I heard people mention on Twitter afterwards because mm-hmm. I, I was not familiar with Chikara, so uh, my ignorance. But yeah, d- when people mention, I the people are showing up clips like, "Wow, they it, it, you didn't even change the paint on the car after you stole it." 
that that's not right. Yep. Now, that's honestly, right. now where were I in my mind when I was hearing when I in the kind of like if I wanted to book this perfectly, this would end up with Shayna Baszler coming down and just whooping everyone's ass. Oh, absolutely. Oh, it's like, so oh, great. you guys are doing this. Good. This is what I've been doing for most of my life. Mm -hmm. Let me snap some arms. Whap. <laughs> but they won't do that. No, no. I, they won't, they no. won't go full the on. Only women it. down there will be the, um, I don't even call them, we, we can't even call them scantily clad ladies anymore because they were not scantily clad. No, no, no. Sasha wears less when she's just in a regular wrestling gear half the time. I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see Fight Club uh, Barry Horowitz show up in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Brawl for some. Uh, it, it's. it's I, the problem is, um, much like there was, there was good discussion. Uh, both. Um, uh, why can't I think it? Maria uh, Canellis. Yes. And yes, I saw her on Twitter. Yeah. Shane Helms both on Twitter talking about the making new stars, and then you get the stuff that happens on raw, I think they're referring mostly to the, um, um, iconics and riot squad kind of set up and prompt match thing being a lazy writing situation. Um, you know, and, and this is, a, this is the thing that, that, um, people are noticing and not just wrestling fans are noticing and the ratings are reflecting it. Um, the investors are noticing this. There is a, a investor talk from the articles I'm reading, that I, you know, I'm basically reading financial articles <laughs> on wrestling dirt sheets, which is so weird. Um, you know, this idea that uh, Vince apparently had said in 2018, we need to create new stars and is saying the same thing now in 2020. And what did we do for the last two years? So, um, I mean, they did make Becky Lynch. They made but... Becky Lynch. Uh, that is true. <laughs> did they make Becky Lynch or did Becky Lynch make Becky Lynch? It doesn't you know. I mean she didn't get treated like Zack Ryder. She got pushed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, yeah. The, she got she got, she, got to go. she she got pushed. They actually gave her the ball, they let her run with it, and she wouldn't have lost the belt if she hadn't gotten pregnant. Yep. Like yep. Yeah. You know, she's on the cover of the video game and she was still like the cover of like like my D V R Raw every week. The poster was Becky Lynch. Still forever. is. Yeah. Still is. So you know, they they, they did at least make one. Yeah. But with that, WWE has the biggest talent pool, has bought the biggest talent pool in the world, hands down. And you can't see, like, why can't anybody get past that NXT bubble, right? Like, or uh, until somebody proves that the NXT bubble is is the top, you know, uh, which I don't know, they, you know, t-shirt sales, whatever the case may be. Um, you can, it, it's... It's a, it's a strange situation over there. Very strange situation over there. Um, I mean, and, and honestly, Raw Underground also masks things like a possible poisoning of a wrestler on a <laughs> national TV show. By yeah. the way, yeah, yeah. Yeah. W watch your sippy. W watch your cup when you're going to the ring because it may uh, be poisoned. And then uh, uh, I think, quote unquote, uh, because I think it was mentioned on the show, Hoodlum's uh, uh, catching a g generator on fire oh, and yes. technical technical issues throughout the night that they kept putting over. And I thought the technical issues were were call out to the hurricanes for. for By some the way, reason. they said there's there's some weather in in Florida, and we had two shots outside where it looked perfectly <laughs> calm. I'm just mm -hmm. noticing something here. <laughs> Jeez, not to mention actually looking out a window if you live in Florida on a Monday night to see if there actually is weather going on because this was definitely not filmed today, yeah. uh, uh, more than likely. So I, I just, oh, there's just, just head smacking moments. Um, as I mentioned last night, I am no longer watching Raw by itself. I am actually rawing it on, I'm rawing it on the side while I'm watching NXT and SmackDown on the, <laughs> at the same time because WWE gets one night. Because WWE, <laughs> that's all you've earned of my time. Yeah. I'm going to fit your seven hours of programming in three. That's all you get. <laughs> okay? Until there's a pay-per-view or a takeover, that's all you get. Wouldn't it be two and a you're half giving, You're giving them more than I do. I, <laughs> well, that's another reason. I watch SmackDown. Right, I, I watch... What's that? What's that, Riz? I like, you're giving it more than I do. Well, I mean... I mean, NXT's like, there's in nothing there. I, 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 
I admit I stream a lot on, you know, twitch.tv slash wrist plays games. Yes. But I, I don't have the, the, the patience stamina. <laughs> yes. Uh, intestinal <laughs> anything. Forti- testicular fortitude. <laughs> yes. A, a, any, a, anything. Mm-hmm. It's strong in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> like w- with this pan, with this pandemic outside, I don't have the ability or like, I can't, I can't watch wrestlers watching wrestling <laughs> on television so that the people who are making the wrestlers watch wrestling can make a whole bunch of money for it. Well, uh, well, I mean, it, yeah, uh, and, and they are making a whole bunch of money. I mean, we can, we can talk about sports Ooh. in general right now. So, uh, That's true. <laughs> I mean, I mean, sorry, baseball. Uh, but, uh, yeah. it, it's, it's, yeah, there's that. Don't and, worry. And, nobody watched and, that Monday and, either. And, 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 no. What? Oh, or tonight. Oh yeah. Um, it's okay. I don't think it's going to last too much longer. Um, but anyways, so you have that as opposed to AEW, which, um, um, is doing the same thing, Rez, but I mean, exact same thing. Yes. Okay. They boom. Yes. Yes, they have, they have, but, but they have a cooler venue. They have been more Mm -hmm. creative with it. Um, they do things that make me want to watch it. Um, and uh, rolled out two other programs that they're still doing every week. Uh, uh, they had a two-hour-long dark with 12 matches last week. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. And then last night they rolled out. I watched a little bit of the first part of it. Um, a 40-minute, uh, um, this, uh, I can never remember the name of it, but the, the women's tournament that they're doing, the uh, yeah. uh, uh, the, the uh, Lethal Lottery. Deadly Draw. The Deadly, deadly draw. draw. Thank you. Um, the, the lethal lottery, the, the, uh, yeah, draw. the lethal yeah. lottery yeah. type thing, it, it, except for the nightmare, except for the nightmare. Um, oh, did you see so how they did that though? No, I missed that. No. There is a reason they're together, <laughs> and it does fit into the deadly draw. Okay, and they did okay. pick the same color. You'll have to watch how they did. Okay, yeah, the, just roll with it. <laughs> So I mean, and I don't feel the only issue I have with dark, and I was I was I was live tweeting while I was watching. I usually watch dark while I edit this show, and uh, I, I'm you like, watch a lot of wrestling, sort of. <laughs> yes, uh, and please I don't, come home, Missy. I don't please have, come home. I don't have anything on the weekends to do anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't go anywhere to watch wrestling, so I have to find it, and 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 here we are. Um, but, uh, I can only escape the West Virginia so many times, um, and, and keep my sanity. So, uh, but, uh, so anyways, what was my point? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh. you, 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 that you watch dark while you are editing this yes. show. And I'm watching the last one. And, and, and I know that when they're doing these matches, it's at, it's like late into the night because they've said on being the elite that it is midnight as like, uh, uh, Brandon and, uh, uh, the librarians' matches starting because the young bucks are always in the crowd yeah. for them. Um, and I was like, "This is how it feels when you're watching JCW at the gathering at three in the morning, and Tommy Dreamer's coming out. Like that vibe. It's really late, and people are out of energy because <laughs> they've been partying all day. Um, like that. That's the vibe. And yet, I'm still going to have a barbed wire match in front of me." <laughs> Dang, you you'd love the gathering. I might have to go. You might if they ever have it again. Um, I think I was supposed to be there this weekend. Uh, but <laughs> um, I, it, I saw the uh, the pictures of like past juggalo or gathering events. The last one was the one where I discovered bare knuckle boxing, and oh. that was a fantastic discovery. Mm. Um, I, t- I learned that I like real violence as much as I like fake violence. Uh, so, um, anyways, and then you grew to be the biggest Wade Barrett fan what? of all time. What? <laughs> Wade Barrett? Wade? What about Wade Barrett? Well, yeah, he was supposed to be a bird knuckle, knuckle fighter, boxer, yeah. boxer. Yeah, that was bare his backstory way, way, way back. Oh, really? I, I never yeah. heard that one. Didn't Regal used to do something like that over in India? Oh, yeah, too. In the Regal India. did it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, aside from that, you know, while there's 
questionable things happening on main television or your YouTube or uh, you know a whole mess of stuff. There's still some great stuff happening over at IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network, and of course our great partners still putting out new content weekly on social medias these days, including Prospect Pro Wrestling and Fight Underground. Of course, Indie Wrestling Network, which still has uh, the most subscribers that we've ever had like, here during this time. And also, that's not all there is. There's plenty of ways free to watch things, including the YouTube channel and the wonderful Twitch stream, IndieWrestling.us uh, over on Twitch.tv, uh, which is honey badger. Currently, if you were watching that instead of this fine show live, you'd be seeing Katie Arquette versus Honey Badger for maybe the first time this ever happened uh, at Stomp Out Cancer uh, at, at the old uh, uh, Rise Stronghold, uh, amongst other great stuff going on over there. But also, like I said, weekly, we're heading into the final um, rounds of the Quarantine Challenge uh, coming up with Prospect Pro Wrestling. So you can follow their Facebook page, Instagram, or the India Wrestling.us YouTube. But also, um, tonight just dropped the uh, apparently first of two matches, surprisingly, of the Brohemoth at Fight Underground. And I believe this was the um, seventh week of the Underground Showdowns going on over there. Uh, you can check out everything from the first tapings up to uh, what's going to happen next week? Again, there's a surprise match that came up uh, that was set up at the end of that match over there on Fight Underground. Go watch uh, Vance Strader versus Brohemoth to see what that is going to be next week. Uh, and, of course, they're doing a lot of great stuff over there, including the Fight Council and um, Inside Out with Brandon K. Over on their Facebook and social media, multi-streaming everywhere there's an account uh, and can shoot video uh, for Fight Underground. F you throw down across social media. And, of course, uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling doing their stuff. So, uh, speaking of which, somebody that's been, like, you know, we kind of joked, uh, familiar with the underground that's been a part of it. And uh, and we've talked before about his deathmatch wrestling um, uh, proclivity, <laughs> I guess. Referee George Ross with us hanging out here. Of course, you've, you've been a part of um, this uh, interesting project that's been happening with Fight Underground um, that's been rolled out over the last several weeks. Um, uh, you know what, and I know it's something you've wanted to be a part of for several months as it's been kind of rolling out. Yes, definitely. Um, honestly, I think they, they did a lot of stuff they should be proud of with the first taping. Mm -hmm. Um, it just feels like it feels gritty. It feels raw. Um, it just feels like something that isn't really happening in wrestling right now. Um, I think uh, like the, the the booking team has a great vision. It feels a lot like um, you know, like especially when you get like the pre the post match interviews uh, following all the fights. It really does sort of feel like the old territory days, maybe from like the seventies or the eighties, if you're in Memphis or or wherever. And um, honestly, like some of the some of the content, like some of the matches were were amazing. Scarlet and Ronnie Nicole, um, Zeke and Justin Idol, uh, AJ and Rev. Um, tag team action featuring Warhoss. I mean, there, there's there's a little there's a little something for everybody here. Um, if you've had a chance to watch any of it, if you haven't, shame on you. Go to the Fight on the Ground Facebook page and check it out to see what one of the newest hottest uh, promotions in Pittsburgh uh, has in store for you. Uh, and of course, you're still you're still finding things to do. I, I know wrestling is a little here and there everywhere. I know we just got an update. Ohio is apparently struck out for wrestling potentially happening with their new roles that they laid out there. John Thorne of AIW is sharing that to remind everybody why they're not running shows right now. For instance, uh, it's still hit and miss here in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think West Virginia is suffering from the, uh, the, the crowd size limitations themselves. Uh, but you're still finding your way around and still finding yourself in death matches during this time. So I'm not going to talk to you about the safety of death matches in this time or actually the safety of death matches in any time, but, but you're still, you're still uh, uh, kind of getting out there and doing that. Yes. Um, I've been doing some of the regular empty arena tapings for real shoot wrestling down in West Virginia as well. Yeah. I got to attend the last one for that. Um, those have been, those have been fun. Um, I did make my way up to Detroit in June for a benefit show for uh, Aaron Orion's son. He is one of the Death Threat Army guys. Mm -hmm. um, his, unfortunately, his son, uh, they found uh, a tumor in his brain the size of like a, ball, a golf ball. 
and he had just recently had surgery. So the folks at Horror Slam Wrestling, uh, Rachel Green and uh, Briar Wellington, um, they threw a series of uh, undisclosed location benefit shows. Um, during which um, the one show I was on up there, they actually had a staple gun match for charity. <laughs> it was, so wait, 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 wait. Is this is this is this go the way that I think it's going to go for oh, charity? Uh, probably. Is it, yeah. is it a throw a throw a coin in the pool kind of situation? Oh yeah. So basically, you know, I've I've sort of felt what I imagine a, a stripper would feel like in a sense <laughs> because there was just singles everywhere. And the gimmick being that, you know, all the money that gets stapled to the two participants all go directly to the cause being why it's medical funds. Um, and the, you know, this was uh, the dirty white boy, Chuck Stein, who, in all honesty, is one of the most unheralded uh, names in, uh, in deathmatch wrestling right now against uh, Aiden Blackheart. That's um, <laughs> I even got stapled in the match. You got stapled for charity. For I, you know, so so this is the only time where where you know adequately you can say that the charity money was blood money. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> so. indeed. <laughs> but the blood was spilled for a great cause. <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, I, I I love that there's there's still inventive ways for um um money to be raised we we yeah, we, we should have had a st- man pb smooth Derek direction you know you could have gotten over quickly you don't have to do all these air break rounds if we could have just had that everybody staple four thousand dollars raised for uh dutters <laughs> well the, the, for- <laughs> that match and the raising itself over 120 dollars nice nice <laughs> thankfully for your health only 120 dollars <laughs> so i mean be- i am wearing the shirt yeah, you know, what's that? You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got oh, the there we on. go. So you know, I'm just saying, it feels better than not getting stapled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's better than staples. <laughs> exactly. Uh, show that shirt again because I had you switched off differently. Oh, I'm, oh I'm, I'm, I, I miss, I miss, I miss switching ah. all over the place. I'm off. My there video are. switching skills are, are off tonight. There it is. Look well, at that. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like a uh, Tyler Klein and stand up for a little bit. Okay. <laughs> 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 there you go. And of course, that is happening. Uh, they actually had their first round this past week um, over on Instagram Live. And I think they're. Oh, I, actually, I don't know if they're now. doing. Uh, well, he's done. He's tired. He's tired already. I'm, I'm done. He's I'm had a long day. Already. He's had a long day. It's okay. I'm, it's okay. I'm still at my work desk. So. Yep. <laughs> That's where all the. Oh, wait. Oh, Ponder's getting his out too. So. Uh, those also uh, thanks to um, Eric Ryan. That did those shirts, by the way, uh, designed by Jack Pollock. So um, some some awesome awesome work. It's awesome to see that everything has gone on with with that uh, rallying around Dutters um, with everything going on with her. So there you go. Now everybody's shirted up. There we uh, go. There you go. There you go. There we go. Mine's in the wash. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say where's your sword? Yeah, mine's in the wash. Sorry about that. That's okay. But uh, no, no, no. Props to all those guys for for helping out with that and, uh, for a really great cause and, ra- and raising so much money for them. It, it was so great. And the fact that both can that hopefully both can walk afterwards. Yes. Yes. Because I imagine your legs are are pretty much jello after that. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, I I feel it needs to be brought up because we did watch Wrestling Society X this past week and 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 and. And George, you 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 watched it back in the day, right? Do you have any fond memories of wrestling? We we talked about it a little bit last night on the show. I only really like the first episode where they did that insane, crazy gauntlet. Didn't where, didn't X Pac end up winning the title and that thing? Uh, it was a contract. Yeah, yeah a contract. Yeah, and yeah. I love the contracts were just a rolled up piece of paper slid through the hole of a chain that was <laughs> hanging, and that was it. And that was it. And there was two of them. You know, I think Vampiro got the other one. They had a match for the uh, spoiler alert. I'm sorry. Uh, had a match for the for the first ever championship. Uh, so I mean, it, it that was when you could tell they were really bringing uh, the ECW vibe because that's the only time you saw Just Incredible. It's the only time you <laughs> saw. Uh, um, oh, who's a, ha- um, Hammerk? Chris Hammerk was, was in Norman it. Norman Smiley in that. Uh no, not that I'm aware of. No, I, not, oh, okay. not that we noticed at least. Um, but but also there's like young young Matt Seidel, young Tyler Black, young uh, uh, Jimmy Jacobs is in it. Uh, uh, do it for her. What's that? Wasn't there a tag team? Do it for her, or do it for her? Or something I like that. I don't recall that. Actually. And it was like it was like an, a very emo. Oh, it was definitely very emo. 
Yeah. Definitely very. Yeah, let, me, emo. let me look this up. Was me, it more emo up. than Age of the Fall? Yeah, because I think they yeah. leaned way into the emo to like nothing. Nothing was subtle. Mm. But also, you'll notice like the crowds. Um, and, and I thought we were talking about like there was some tweets or yep. some write up or something about like the crowd was very uh, 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 obviously like crowd casting and not wrestling fans. It's like we went to casting for wrestling fans. We didn't go to wrestling fans to cast us. Hmm. Think how Lucha Underground does it. Because you just look at like what are all these bro dudes hanging out in the front row with uh, button up t-shirts or yeah, button up uh, collar shirts and stuff, right? Um, one guy had a suit jacket. It was real strange for being um, this this underground alt society kind of thing uh, that that that. Did, did, did it you sing? mean to tell me you can't go to Brooks Brothers and be underground, Sorg? No, no. All right. <laughs> and then just like wow. like that next to random Juggalo merch. Ah. Just just random Juggalo merch. Right, where not? You know, I, I was correct. Their tag team name was D I F H. Oh. Was Jimmy Jacobs in it? Yeah. Yes. Who yeah. did he team with? Tyler Black. Seth Rollins. Tyler Black. Oh, so they did Age of the Fall before Ring of Honor did. How about that? I think it was yeah. around the same time. Well, no. Age, uh, okay, no. A- Age of the Fall wasn't formed until the Man Up pay-per-view in 2007. Okay. Because I remember when- Jimmy Jacobs wearing the white suit after they hung J or Mark Briscoe, like, you know, 15 feet above the ring after Ladder War and his blood, basically. He, he got a literal bloodbath, not mm-hmm. the gangrel stuff. Like that was like legit. His blood just dripped all over him. It was a great. Oh, Two thousand seven was Wrestling Society X time too. Yeah, yeah. It, it debuted in January, which means they taped. I think. I think they taped the pilot in February two thousand six. Yeah. So Man Up would have been, I think, in the, sometime in the summer or fall of two thousand seven. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, it it is interesting, and it was ex- elated to see that Pro Wrestling Tees actually did put up merchandise. For the ten year anniversary and everything <laughs> from like uh, d- died too young and uh, wrestling society X, which I think is the shirt that I want to get, and the one was a uh, 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 um, high spot crowd shot, high spot crowd shot, high spot explosions. <laughs> Pretty much lays it out. And, um, ba- it was it was it was like the only televised wrestling show that promised. And overhyped explosions in wrestling matches. Time Bob, what was it? Time Bob, exploding steel cage tag team match. Dang. Yes. Yep. And that was after the Piranha Death match. That sounds like the one gimmick that Paul Heyman had, where Public Enemy, if they lost a match, they're gonna have to get put in the cage and get exploded. That sounds like it. Because it was you hit a red, you climbed up on the scaffolding, hit a red button. Your team escapes the cage as fast as they can. You leave the other team behind to get exploded. I mean, it's not like when the Abdul the Butcher got electrocuted. No, no, I, not like that. Wasn't there also like a casket match that also exploded? Yes, there was an exploding cas- casket match, and apparently this was um, this happened. Tina filled us in on this in the in the chat room while we were watching. Um, this happened at IWA in Puerto Rico. Um, Mm. Savio Vega's promotion, I believe, and it led into the storyline of Wrestling Society X that the one guy got exploded was scarred, uh, Ricky Banderas, who became later uh, Mel Mortez, um, and uh, it was back to for revenge against Vampiro. So they had another exploding casket match. Man, because, Vampiro of and course. Mel Mortez, like they just go together, don't they? Yeah, they've been fighting forever. They've been it's an ageless battle. <laughs> So, by the way, this was a pretty badass era for uh, Vampiro. So, um, but oh. anywho, uh, no, it, it was pretty crazy. Um, so uh, it's all on it's all on YouTube. You guys can watch it. Um, you don't have to pay twenty dollars on Amazon like we did for the DVD. But there's a lot of fun stuff on the DVD that I think uh, we're gonna appreciate. For, I want to listen to all the commentaries and everything. Uh, just just there's a lot of just just you know what season two was going to be, where they were going with things. It's really good. Uh, let's see. You got to go to men's warehouse to be underground. No, you need to be, you need to go to men's warehouse to be part of team big league. I understand. So, um, You'll like the way you look. Say, if you're going to go, go quickly. <laughs> What's that? Men's they, warehouse. They going out. They going out. Yep. Did not know that. Yep. Um, 
new stable called Retribution. Nobody has to be revealed yet, though. What? So, <laughs> yeah, that's the the anarchists that oh, tore up. the guys outside. <sighs> because you know, mm-hmm. topical stuff. Yeah. Uh, did we did we forget about the hacker? By the way. Oh no, I think that's part of it now. Oh really? That makes sense. Really? They, they dropped that for the longest. Yeah. And yeah, I think they I think they're going with Mr. Roboty type vibes. Uh, I, I, it, it seems like a mm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It seems I don't know. We'll see what happens in the 3 hours I allot for you WWE until SummerSlam. Um anyways, but you know what? You know what is not failing me? <laughs> And I am not limiting my time for, except for maybe Pizza? for my, ti- uh, my, except for maybe my calorie count because I want to keep my girlish figure. Uh, <laughs> our good friends over at Slice on Broadway, SliceOnBroadway dot com. Now three locations because um, just like how baseball has barely been there for the last several years, <laughs> there's no people at PNC Park, and now there is no Slice on Broadway. Uh, so since you know at least was up, you know it was time, <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's okay. There's no. They didn't put them in the bubble. Look, so. look uh, if I may go off on a little side thing so, here. For, okay. For a slice. Yes. The pizza place that they took over was shit. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a frozen pizza place. Oh, we do ads like had, no other. <laughs> what was that? P- slice on Broadway. Way better than that shitty place in the park before. Yes. And I'm not. I'm not kidding either. It was not that good. But this is the, on this is the one Rico listens to. I just know. To a new level. Yes, yes, That's, yes, they did. Yes, they did. I know. I know, Riz. You've been enjoying it over there on the other end of town in East Liberty, one of the now three locations, and they are looking to. As I as I have always said, that they are continually looking to expand. They said, "Yes, we're closing this, but we have several options for a new fourth location." Yeah, there you go. That's why I'm not taking that out of the graphic because I know I just need to fill in a new one in I don't know four weeks because that's how these guys run. I don't know. Just cross it off just and cr- just say you know, it's right there. Yeah. Lo- location pending. <laughs> TBD. 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 I like that. I like that. Riz. As soon as I get into my Photoshop, I have a chance. I want to TBD that PNC, and uh, we'll <laughs> just move on from there. Uh, <laughs> look into the I future. I'm trying to think of pizza toppings that go with TBD, but I'm like. I don't know. It's it's um fine. tomato basil and uh d- 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 deliciousness deliciousness I like it I like it check them out sliceonbroadway.com guys we are going to actually hear Katie tell us about some stuff also a little hey. bit of a PSA from our friend BC Steel and we'll be right hey. back with the big hey. question Sidekick Media Services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Now a public service announcement from Benjamin C. Steele talking to you about wearing a mask. Not this one, but this one. With everything going on right now with this pandemic, you need to wear a mask. My mask is for your safety. Your mask is for mine. Now I don't care what your uncle's, brother's, best friend's, mailman's, roommate from college put on social media. Chances are they didn't think it through, and there's a very better than average chance that they're an idiot. So when you go outside, you put on your little mask over your face, put the little straps around your ears, and we're all going to be a lot safer. This is a team effort. And if we're being completely honest, some of you need not only this mask, but this mask too. We are back. Thank you, BC, for um, educating. And well, there will, be, of course, be part of our further education later in the show with uh, Professor Jacob Edwin in our homework assignment for this week. But, of course, now uh, we are still back here with Riz, Dave Potter, uh, uh referee George Ross as well, hanging with us. Uh, but it is time for the big question. Of course, we have uh, judged, if you will, this raw underground topic uh, 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 matter and uh, what WWE is attempting to do with um, something that, you know, quote, feels real uh with no ropes in daddy's backyard um but uh so i, I go back because actually a couple of things were mentioned in chat and conversation about other attempts like this and there have been several attempts to add um a a mimicked realism if you will or realism results unfortunately in one case that was on dark side of the ring 
um, you know, whether it be an MMA ish or street fight <clears throat> kind of atmosphere. So, so the big question is, what is your favorite or most memorable uh, attempts in wrestling at realism? And whether it be an attempt in MMA, boxing, fight kind of situation, uh, much like what was attempted this week. Um, you guys have an answer? The uh, hop uh, on to all easy. right, all right, easy, easy. Um, any anything involving Casanova Valentine? For those that don't know, Casanova Valentine is the king of the no ring death match. Okay, of the uh, no ring death the match. The no ring death match. Yeah. I mean, if you want something that, like, I did a, uh, so, uh, this was back in February, uh, the show was called This Is Horror Slam, uh, my big match the night was a death match between him and Chuck Stein, um, sorry, sorry, <laughs> so, um, I mean, they, they, like, they just fought all over the VFW, and Casanova ended up waterboarding them with a pitcher of beer. Jeez. Um, before they, they eventually did work their way back into the ring. Uh, the finish was a sling blade, ironically enough, onto, uh, Oh shit. On, he was at VOW. Yes. Onto knife <laughs> boards. Um, you know, no, Casanova is all over the place. He's basically a hipster cat. He's, he's a hipster uh, cactus Jack. That is a barbed wire. Um, yeah. Uh, cross, mm-hmm. uh, uh, hanging cross. Yeah. Uh, um, so he's, a, so do you remember, uh, when you remember seeing shots of MV young, when he had uh, when he had those scars on his like those big welts on his back, yeah. Casanova Valentine's the guy who broke the light tubes on him. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, he's the one that um, scarred Envy Young for life. Well, I don't even know if he scarred him, but like I remember, uh, it was it was the night after he'd done a no ring death match with him, and he like you know some of the, some of the the stuff in the match is probably why he was cringing a little more. Mm. Um, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, cause, yeah cause it, that was one of the ones they did in Brooklyn. Like M- M- MV does the ones that are kind of like uh, like he kind of marks them like fashion shows. Yeah. Um well actually I think that's part of the deal, isn't it? Don't they do like a fashion show? Like they aren't, like, aren't no they like death match? they're like a drag fashion show. Yeah, in a sense I think. Then then mixed with death match at the same show. Exactly. It's it's it's, it's wild. I I I love it. Yeah, hopefully you can bring one to Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, yeah, but no, like if we're talking like probably that, um, I've also done a death match where two guys end up working their way to the back of the VFW to a bar, interrupted a members only poker game to take a shot of fireball with each other before brawling outside <laughs> to uh, throwing each other into the ice machine on the side of a family dollar. So. And I was a Dollar General, okay. Dollar General on a Family Dollar. I did, I did, I did, I did witness a, a a death match in California for a whole fifteen people that spilled out into the street, and then everybody had to run back in because the cops were legitimately outside pulling somebody over down the street. <laughs> oh goodness! And, and so I was like, "Everybody in, cops!" I was like, "Oh shit!" Uh, but um, that was interesting. Sun City, California. Mm. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, I think it was my first time out there. Uh, but, uh, so so. <laughs> I guess that's the most real, right? Is the death matches. <laughs> so, uh, Riz, partner, you have one. Dave, you can go. I'm thinking right no, now. No, no, you can go, Riz. I'm, I, I'm I mean, I got one if you need a second because uh, this. Uh, oh yeah. This this recent uh, uh, NXT. What was it called? The Fight Pit. Um, I think we brought oh, it up. Uh, you mean uh, Timothy Thatcher yeah, thing, with, or with Thatcher, and Riddle? with Thatcher and Riddle? I love that concept. Yeah. Um, and especially yeah, having those those couple of MMA style guys uh, as a part of it. Yeah, I mean, it is, is obviously a flashback to the Lions Den match with Ken Shamrock back in the day. Uh, so, I mean, I think those are those are fantastic. Uh, and I hope they come back. I hope we do return to something like that. It seemed like an odd thing to pop out of seemingly nowhere. Because I think I was a couple of weeks. Uh, I took a couple of weeks off of NXT because the world happened. You have three uh, hours. Yeah. It was before the three hour roll, but, uh, uh, it, it was, it, I, it's one I hope that comes back. It one that felt really, really realistic and had a different vibe to it. And, and it really probably led to the guys kind of pulling it off. And I hadn't, and Thatcher, I think I missed the entire introduction of Thatcher. So it just like, here's this guy. I was like, Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's mine. That's mine. Who has the next one? Uh, I can go now. Any Vader match on WCW. Oh, shit. (laughs) Like, the the one thing that stuck stuck in my head, I I always remember there was this one match where 
they just stop. They just stop. Like they just cut to somewhere else and go. It's too. You don't want to see what's happening now. Just, yeah. just, just believe me. I think it was made in uh, Vader first Sting, and he just beat the shit out of Sting. I'm just trying to think of what. Like, it just the image of my head just having that news report just go. Yeah, don't worry. Don't. It's fine. But just that realism of Vader punt, like throwing stiff punches, mm -hmm. no matter where he's at, mm -hmm. WCW, WWE, New Japan, just name a place he's he probably has knocked somebody out <laughs> in real life. Kuwait, Kuwait, yeah, Kuwait. <laughs> uh, but like uh, the the famous one about knocking somebody out, Ken Shamrock. Yeah. <laughs> knocked his ass silly. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, just any Vader match. I like it. Period. What about you, Dave? Well, I'm going to springboard off of that, and I would say Ken Shamrock's original run in WWE back in the Attitude Era, mm -hmm. where he was just so different from anyone else at the time. And, and, and MMA oh, was a new concept at the time, too. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. You figure it was brand new. There wasn't this crossover back and forth. And here's the guy who, and he, he looked badass, but he didn't look. You got like I said, okay, little background. You got to remember I, when I started wrestling, it was '84. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know, show my age, but think about what wrestlers look like in the '80s. Mm -hmm. They literally look like blown up balloons half of them because of the muscles. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Shamrock it was solid, but he wasn't big and blown up. He looked like, I know, I don't want to say, yeah, obviously MMA fighter, but he looked like someone who I, I get in this shape because I need to be in this shape to beat people up. Not because I want to look a certain way to be on TV, you know? Yeah. And with the gloves coming in like that and just the, the no nonsense attitude mm -hmm. until unfortunately, his sister and the Val Venus. Yeah. 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 Until they, they more characterized him in a little yeah, bit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because you really didn't need, I mean, honestly, you can even do Lance Storm. Yeah. You know, I'm here to wrestle. I'm here to beat people up and win. I am not here to entertain you. Yeah. Even though his matches were entertaining, but you know, I am not here to do the flashy, happy stuff. Flashy, happy stuff. And, well, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, like you know, what I mean, what I mean, comparing him to playing with someone playing to the crowd, yeah, or, yeah. you know, oh look, I'm wearing neon outfits and I'm, you know, I don't have a skateboard. I'm not coming out with the skateboard, and I can't skateboard. <laughs> yep. They did piggyback off Shamrock, <laughs> like in his early run, because then they brought in Severin, yeah, and yep. even. Uh, Doctor Death, for mm -hmm. for Brawl uh, I almost said Fight Club for Brawl, <laughs> Brawl. but it, it it yeah like just that realism of these guys yeah. don't know what the fuck they're doing. I, I do love and that we we didn't even like bring up Brawl for all as a option here. <laughs> no, I, okay, I got I that have a, can I have a one B? Okay, okay. So I don't like I don't know if this was intended to come off this way, but. It's just one of those old famous mean guy matches. Uh, it was back in the Bill Watts era of WCW during mm -hmm. that like six to eight month span where he was booking. And I guess it was a match that sold really big in Japan, but didn't do that well in the States. It was Rick and Scott Steiner against freaking Dr. Death and Bam Bam Terry Gordy oh, when they were the oh. Miracle Violence Connection. And they just oh. beat the crap out of each other, man. You feel the strikes watching it. It's it's like it's an odd. It was awesome. I loved it. Is that on the network? Uh, yeah, Whoa. I think that would have been from probably. Like, Can that be your homework for this week? Oh, for us? oh <laughs> that should. Be, I wish so. That would be. Yeah, that'd be. Send me. Send me where that match is on the network. I would love to take yeah, a look. Yeah, no, I, I definitely will find it. Um, it's it's uh, definitely something to behold. They, it's it's good. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, because like they just 
they tear into each other, man. And it's just like the four old school hardcore guys like that. Yep, like, got it. Mm-hmm. So if you guys, if you guys have wow. a favorite, uh, quote, realistic uh, attempt in professional wrestling, uh, please hit us up at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Comments on this video if you're watching on any of those formats. And uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So let's go to the homework assignment. Professor Jacob Edwin, please uh, support him at uh, uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jacob Edwin. Uh, he has some good Thank stuff you. over there. Thank you. Uh, and uh, he had an assignment for us this week. Uh, uh, this was this was a good one. This was a good one. Mister Perfect oh. versus Bret Hart, Prime Time Wrestling, November sixth, nineteen eighty nine. We were definitely leading up the Survivor Series at this point. It was actually that Sunday was going to be the Survivor Series Showdown special leading up to the Survivor Series. Um, By the way, I was two years old. You were, and Riz was two years old at that point. I would have yeah. been seven months old. I, 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 we're just, we're, we're okay. saying November, November 2019. Uh, tw- what? I mean, 20, I mean, sorry, not 2019. Sorry. Uh, uh, 1989. November, right? Yeah. 1989. So okay. Yeah, I was eight. So I was halfway through my senior year of high school. I was eight. I was eight. Uh, so now so that we, right. now that we've done that, uh, in, in <laughs> retrospect, uh, so, so this was, this is something I would have had no awareness of because, because, we didn't have cable in 1989. Uh, I wouldn't so, know it because I was two. And uh, yeah, also that. So first eyes, the new eyes on this, apparently. Uh, this was, I think this is Bret Hart just getting coming of age of sorts. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Perfect was still undefeated at the time, apparently. Uh, was managed by the genius, Lanny Poffo, which was mm. a delight. Uh, who all, apparently was ring announcing Mr. Perfect to the ring and also mm-hmm. announced him as the winner at the end. Um, yeah. So that was fun. Um, Riz, there was a point in this match where uh, Mr. Perfect was, he got hit by Brett and he fell to the ring as he was trying to slide out and did like this spin move. Oh, I was going to mention was, that in my little thing. Okay, it was it, it was if you imagine the the Homer Simpson running in a circle on his side mm-hmm. visual, but a lot smoother and impressive. Yeah, yeah. So so that caught uh, your attention. That that did catch my attention because those two men have done like in that match some of the very intricate parts to make that match look as real as that match can be mm-hmm. on a random night in West Virginia. In Wheeling, West Virginia. I've because been, I've been in that arena <laughs> for, for, for Naylor's hockey, actually. Yeah. Because I know, I, I, like I, said, I noted an arena football uh, and a ring of honor show. Oh, I think about it. Yeah. Sorry. So like I, I, I noted about that slide out of the, the helicopter slide out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've also compared that to Brett's uh, there at the later part of the match. He he's always done this, but just seeing it live, I jumped up out of my chair because I knew exactly what was happening. But when he, when he got reversed into the, into the ring ropes, chest first, he always does that to make it look really real. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there was another part where Mr. Perfect at the very, like not the very end, like at the, one of the uh, later parts of the match for Mr. Perfect, he takes Bret Hart's hair, starts rolling it up in his finger before he just tosses him over. Just to make it that one inch, just, just make sure you get that one inch of a of a dick move. Uh, was <laughs> it, that, wasn't there a point? I can't actually. I feel like it was. It must have been perfect doing this, but he had him in the in a headlock. Gets up on the ropes, like tries to shoot him off. Grabs that the that was Brett. And he, it's like he grabbed him by the hair and pulled him back into the headlock. Yes, like, that, that was like, Brett. Th- that, that was a smooth move. Like a cocky Bret Hart match in 1987 or 89. Mm-hmm. Like 
that was fun. Mm -hmm. Like that part, just that air, that moment was fun. Seeing how he twisted and turned Mm -hmm. the rule book kind Mm -hmm. of sort of, Mm -hmm. they they were kind of hinting of a, maybe he's going to be a heel. He was also, he's also probably coming off of heart foundation ness, right? That's true. He might have been in Heart Foundation still at the time. Now I think about it, he was like this. Was, this is an oddball singles match for him, right? But yeah, you got you got hair pulls. You yeah. got Brett doing a five count, um, and then like he he held he held him. The ref was counting the five. Let go right back to headlock. Mm-hmm. Like like ah. um, on Mister Perfect, who is undefeated and a heel with. Lanny Poffo, genius on the side. Our, our commentators at the time, Tony Schiavone and Lord Alfred Hayes, by the way, because um, I keep mm-hmm. forgetting about Tony Schiavone being a part of WWF like as a whole. Um, I believe it was the Fantastic very, Mustache. Very, very highly underrated. Absolutely. Dude. Absolutely. Like, I, I love them. I love them even more than I do Hayes and Monsoon. Yeah, yeah, I can go with that. Because uh, do, during those... Uh, those tapings if it was monsoon and haze they rarely they go off the rails oh yeah they, they like you can tell they were just doing this just to you can tell this is hour six of their uh, uh day yeah. of of uh post-match records uh- <laughs> and by the way i i love i love the genius just sliding in a their they don't know what they're doing in the sound booth. Yeah. You all should be listening to me. It's like, oh my God. And commentary is like, he's talking about us up here. What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny. It, well, I mentioned the commentary team because there was a point that, that kind of shocked me where they talked about uh, Brett got a near fall and it was like, that would have been an upset. Yeah. Like when you, when is the last time you heard that would be an upset with Bret Hart winning? <laughs> probably 1990 right uh so it, it was it was really interesting because I, I i think i think if you sit down to watch this match and again i thought it was like 91 92 you know was my feeling when i watched it um but then like all those little things like that realize like oh no this is a little earlier so that mm-hmm. that's kind of fun also um were you like i hit the thing like i hit the chapter thing on, on the network and and dropped right into the match and then and, and in the middle of it uh, Roddy Piper pops on Roddy my screen, oh, and, and 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 shocks me. And we're like, oh, Roddy Piper's here, yelling at me about this match, and people and them them punt, pulling each other's hair and stuff. Uh, and then you realize, like, um, for some reason, because then, then I watched the final segment, they had Piper. Uh, I Piper guess Piper just in a he was in a like a rocking chair. chair, office chair somewhere other than McMahon. Or, I'm sorry, Heenan and uh, 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 Monsoon. Monsoon. Uh, I, I, I'm presuming like they needed to be separated for some reason because I think they're. I think I do recall something where like he got in a fight with Heenan on the show or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, that kind of that kind of surprised me. And then still 15 minutes left of that match. And I I did do what you did. I went to the chapter, mm-hmm. but then I started hitting back a little bit. Oh yeah, I know, wish I I, I, I didn't have to, I didn't that. have enough time to do that this time. And then I I actually posted in the Slack the the one line that i got out of everything out of out of that whole conversation was monsoon looking at uh heenan and going i never saw mr perfect get licked <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like i'm like eh, man cuz of course they were talking about the bushwhackers uh being on i believe team um, We're gonna Roddy's Rowdies, bro. Roddy's, yeah, Roddy's Rowdies. Yeah. Um, there's a fun segment um, where Piper is trying to get Heenan to bet on matches, and Heenan won't even bet on his own family members' matches for some <laughs> reason. Um, seems kind of interesting. I was gonna had a lot of fun with that. So, um, no, yeah, those were always those are always great. Like anytime I got a chance to see the primetime wrestling, I always loved it because I think I think we did have it locally like late Friday nights or something on like local TV. But um, I don't know. Was it, was it primetime wrestling a Monday show? Was that anybody that was around the area? Dave, you were around in that area. You were, <laughs> no, we didn't have cable. Oh, you didn't have cable either. Okay. I, I didn't. I, I 
didn't have we didn't have cable growing up. Now, yeah, now you do. That's November sixth. So let me let me do a quick check here. The twelfth was, was the original. Sunday because they they advertised that. So that would have been uh, math. Yeah, that probably would have been Monday. That that or Sunday. Yeah, it was Monday. That was Monday. It was Monday. Yeah, okay. Anyways, oh, it, it was fun to kind of flash back on that. Well, wasn't uh, wasn't that a syndicated show? I, it was syndicated. I think it was it was first run on USA, but also syndicated. Like we had it on our um, kind of Fox affiliate, I yeah. think, or or ABC affiliate kind of thing at like ten o'clock on Sundays. So even though it's dated November sixth, that may not have necessarily it, aired at no, first well, on November sixth. Yeah, and of course, depending I, I, on your market, and I don't know what the lead time was on pre tapes for matches at that time too. Um, I, I don't know if you saw Hank Hudson some of the stuff he shares. He shared a wheeling show that had twelve matches on it. And it was like it was labeled as uh, for a wrestling challenge and Coliseum video content, right? And that just the card looks insane. And I'd love to see the card that this came from as well, uh, being just down there in uh, West Virginia at the first Niagara Center, maybe. I don't know what it could have been called back then, but uh, but that was fun. Uh, uh, Dave, George, do you have any other thoughts about uh, you know this era at least of uh, uh, Brett and Mister Perfect from your recollections? It's so weird to watch Brett. Like my vision of like when like when Brett is like Brett as you know him is probably like um, when you like my first memory of that is probably at the the next year Survivor Series. Mm -hmm. It's when he's teaming with Dusty Rhodes on you know (sighs) that final stretch he had with Ted DiBiase. That is when I like that's like when I like that's the current like that's when Bret Hart became the Bret Hart that you know every like that everybody started to know and love. Like mm-hmm. it, so it is weird to go back and, you know, see him like pre that era at all having singles matches when the animal's not around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is odd, but uh, also they were doing interesting pair ups. It sound like where smash was taken on Ted DiBiase at Survivor series showdown and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah. It, and, uh, what, 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 you mentioned, um, the brain buster, um, not Aaron Anderson, the other one, totally Blanchard. Uh, totally Blanchard, you know, it, like those guys were like almost exclusively a tag team during that era. Right. Like you never saw them mix it up singles wise. Yeah. So, um, what about you, Dave? Well, yeah, I mean, especially Brett and Mr. Perfect back then. You, I mean, you were going to get a, I mean, uh, this, this without even looking at the homework, you knew, Oh, Brett, Mr. Perfect. Yeah. It's going to be a really good match because there's two really good wrestlers. Mm hmm. And it was uh, going to be really good wrestler without excessive weirdness, which I mean, we're talking late eighties Vince. So yeah, he loved the weird goofy stuff, but didn't need it. <laughs> it was a competitive match. Bobby of J town yeah. in the chat is correcting us. Primetime wrestling was on Tuesdays. That makes sense. Cause it probably replaced Tuesday night Titans. Didn't it? That was also in USA early on. So mm. that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Well, that was our homework. Thank you, Professor Jacob Edwin, for educating on that. Give us a reason to uh, deep dive into some uh, uh, classic stuff back then. So let us um, hop in and uh, check out what he has in store for us this week. Wrestling Mayhem Show, my name is Professor Jacob Edwin. You can support the classroom and support the arts. Uh, by going to prowrestlingtees.com slash Jacob Edwin. I want to go back. I want to go back to an event I just covered just two lessons ago, uh, two assignments ago, I should say, January 20th, 20th, 2002, uh, the same event as Edge versus William Regal. We're going to go right into a double feature that is Jazz versus Trish Stratus. For the women's championship Mm. Uh, this is a fantastic match I'd like to feature jazz because she is one of the most underrated talent uh, anywhere of any era you know this was someone that really could have followed through and uh, made it now she made a big name for herself she was multiple women uh, multiple time women's champion but um, probably came a little before her time you know sometime where she could have been featured in main events today and is still currently wrestling today um, one of the toughest people out there, man or woman, and just, uh, I mean, all in all smart, which is what I like to feature on this show, but very impressive as a talent and as a, as a competitor. Please follow very closely and watch as she leads a younger Trish Stratus to her rise to stardom. 
Thank you. There you go. Uh, so so uh, to clarify, because we screwed this up two weeks ago, that is uh, the 2002 Royal Rumble. Yes. So don't I just, I just looked it up. It yeah. Is. We well we had Ed, Edwin Regal from that night, and somehow I watched the next night's Raw, and then No Way Out from the next month, thinking that was from the night before because I didn't see the date on it because the way the network like orders things. So. That was we 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 I should have looked up and found out as a Royal Rumble uh, to put in the notes, but uh, that's on me. And most of us screwed it up, <laughs> so uh, I think one of us watched the right match that time. So, anyways, uh, so that, that, I'm looking forward to that one, uh, 2002 Royal Rumble. Uh, Jazz and Trish Stratus, thank you, Jay Good Edwin, for that. Did the dog make a sound? No, oh, no, he's out cold. He's out cold. Okay, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, he is out cold. Holy crap! You worked him up. Somebody asked over on the uh, watch party, uh, 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 Joey Sassuri, uh, uh if you were petting a cat earlier. And I was like, no, that's our chihuahua. That's our chihuahua. Wicked. Um, the podcast dog. That's, that's part of the lore. Guys, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? To wrap things up. Who wants to go first? I learned how the crucible huh? is supposed to end. Okay. <laughs> how the crucible is supposed to end? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I learned. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't want to interrupt. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. I learned you, that uh, having a uh, a series of matches at a polycult mansion can be pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. from one Ziggy Heim. <laughs> uh, look that up. I, I, I got the link uh, from somebody yesterday, uh, but the, I think it's Go Professional Wrestling on, on Twitch. You can go see the VOD of it. Um, um, yeah, and, well, or look up MB Young's yeah. thing on Twitch, too. That's where I saw it. It's on that? Okay. Uh, it, yeah. it, it was. It, they set up a ring, uh, uh, there, it, which featured, amongst other things, uh, Lee Moriarty against Ziggy Heim. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, new t-shirt uh, alert for Ziggy. Uh, a, mm-hmm. a kosher pro wrestler, I think, is the shirt over on yeah. uh, um, Brain Buster Tees. So, so putting that out there. Um, also Effie versus MV young. And it was basically like in what they say it was a tomato patch in Brooklyn in somebody's backyard. Yeah, pretty much. They stuck a ring and yeah. made a show happen. It was like this, this secret show that happened up there. And by yeah, the and way, MV, uh, go ahead. I would say as MV mentioned afterwards, cause people were complaining about the quality of the ring. Mm-hmm. And he said, he put so much money into fixing the ring and parts because the ring he got apparently was not the best in the world. And he said uh, he apologized because people were complaining on Twitter afterwards. Yeah. And he said, yeah, it wasn't what it, what, what I wanted to be. I apologize. I want to make sure I would never want to put anyone in any harm's way. And at least a lot of people on Twitter didn't said, Oh yeah, we didn't realize this was you. And we didn't realize that everything we're sorry. So Twitter actually acted reasonably or some, some of Twitter acted somewhat reasonably. So that's news. <laughs> Jeez. Um, By the way, Ziggy, Ziggy Heim mm-hmm. was also in an unaired crucible match. Yeah, she was, she mentioned that on Twitter. She wanted to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I learned um, how much I enjoy um, explosions and uh, piranha death matches in wrestling, apparently. Uh, and then we found last night a actual piranha death match in in um, in Japan. Japan. That had to be Japan. Ooh, yeah, it was like Big Japan, I believe. Uh, that was fun. Uh, is in holy shit. Uh, so uh, no, that was a blast. Uh, so it was um, uh, it was very educational wrestling at wrestling watching that wrestling society. Again, all that stuff's on YouTube. You can watch it at your leisure and it may give you something to kind of pontificate where people are right now and what could have been if MTV didn't cancel this after nine of the 10 episodes that were made. So yeah. Uh, George, what'd you learn in wrestling this week? Learned that uh, having shows outdoor under COVID regulations can be a real pain in the butt. We had a show get canceled on Saturday. So, Oh, you're going to uh, AON, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was considering actually coming out to that. Um, sadly well, uh, reconsider because i like they may end up rescheduling okay um pretty soon coming up i'll give you some info. listen if, if it's a situation where i'm not you know where p- 
people are, are <coughs> doing what they're supposed to be doing and I, I can like stand in the back away from everybody, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Yeah, I, I, I said I found myself in a situation a couple weeks ago that I wasn't terribly crazy about, mm. but uh, that was my choice. I could have I could have stood somewhere else. Uh, so, um, but no, yeah, that, that's as long as we're doing things responsibly. So, and that's the thing. Now we got to do them outside because of where Pennsylvania is at with things. So, um, and that turns into other kinds of problems. Lesson two: You should always remember to wear your sunscreen. Oh yeah. I had a mask line. Oh, yeah. oh no. Uh-huh. Oh no. There's a billboard about summertime fun and with the outline of a mask mm-hmm. I saw the other day. Oh, I did, I, did a I, du- I did a double shot and I had a real bad mask line for a few oh, days. Oh no. And I peeled and I and I peeled the hell too. Oh man. no. Ooh. That is wow. embarrassing. Uh <laughs> I'm sure it's happened to a lot of people I mean, right now, really, though. I mean, it, it's, it was a minor sacrifice for the craft. Though, I would so. get it because I would wear, um, I would wear the. I don't know you've seen the face mask that I'm wearing. It's the, all the bandanas yeah. I get from Baja. So I would get that line like up here around mm. around around the eyes, and that was it. Like just just a, around the eyes because I'm also wearing a hat, and then I'm out in the <laughs> desert. <laughs> so we shouldn't call it the farmer's tan. We should start the, calling that the Billy the Kid. The Billy the Kid. I like that. Yes. I like that. Uh, Dave. What did you learn? Well, actually, I mentioned about the um, the poly cult. Oh no! Yeah, we and, already did. You. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, already now did. he did mention on Twitter though that the next poly cult um, wrestling event will be had will be somewhere in the Pittsburgh area. Yes, yes. I I messaged him. I was like. Yes. Do you need help? <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> yeah. I am down with whatever. Uh, yes. So very excited about that. If not, if I if it's uh, a private thing, if I can uh, steal an invite off of somebody, I'd love to be there. I'll join the cult for a night. Half That's stri- right. Half stripes will travel. <laughs> that, exactly. No, looking forward to that. I, I know he had some other things that he was going to do. I think he said like that weekend enjoy was supposed to start. Like he was aiming to do a. A bar, a no ring bar uh, show as well. So, um, and so much cool stuff that could have happened, but a lot of cool stuff. People trying in the meantime too. What I say, keep saying, wrestling uh, finds a way. Uh, Tina learned that the length of time for all the raw underground fights was a cum- cum- cumul- cumulative cumulative cumulative. Thank you. Cumulative. It's too late. Need more coffee. A uh, minute and fifty-seven seconds to that entire night. Uh, By the way. Um- Crucible matches have to be under three minutes. Mm-hmm. Then yes. Okay. Somebody did say three minutes. <laughs> Bobby OJ Town learned that Raw is now two hours, which frees up a lot of time. What? Mm-hmm. Well, if they're going to do an hour's worth of uh, time for Raw Underground, the rest of Raw is only two hours. Well, then, though, yep. But they're not. <laughs> but they're not. they're not. Like, it's not. not like, uh, uh, it's. Uh. I kind of wish they would, just to do I something think that's, different. I think that's kind of the rumor is that they want to make Raw Underground like the last hour of Raw. Because it worked so well when we tried this with WCW. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's almost like they're saying, hey, what we can do to do the ratings? Hey, let's look and see what WCW did 20 years ago. Uh, that worked for them. What's Queewee uh, doing nowadays? What is Queewee up to? Hmm. Has oh, anybody checked on Queeby lately? Guys, it's been a fun night of conversation. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, George, for joining us in studio, braving the regulations and wearing your masky mask and sitting all the way over there and petting my dog. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Someone had to keep him company. Is there any social media uh, people can follow your uh, adventures on and where you might end up? Well, I finally changed my uh, nickname on Facebook to Ref George Ross. So oh, you yay. Just, you could just search that and I'll probably come up. There so. you go. And find out where you're going to end up, right? Exactly. So. Uh, off, only on Facebook, though. Well, I'm, I'm or, old. I don't have Instagram or, or, or a Twitter. So. Or find out afterwards because a lot of these are secret locations these days, I notice. Yes, so yes. Uh, that's that's been happening. So uh, find out where I won't be. Uh, did we talk about the new faction name, the Retribution? Yeah, I, I didn't see the reference to that, actually. Uh, supposedly that's the people that Molotov. Um, they under yeah, yeah, we didn't men- we 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 mentioned it. In I think passing. we didn't pass it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, know what much- we didn't mention, which I'm surprised of. The Gallows and Anderson thing. I uh, didn't watch it. 
Didn't watch Neither it. Also, did also, a friend of the show, Mike Moran, um, was a part of that production team, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, because he was tweeting, he's like, it was interesting. It was a, he was like, it was like glad I could make some people laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, all right. So, um, I know Zeke Mercer was watching it and and was like, what the hell did I just do? Uh, so, Zeke liked it. I mean, Zeke, Zeke hated it. Uh, I think Ronnie loved it. <laughs> I guess it's a thing. Well, God bless them. God bless them for doing the thing that they want to do and finding their audience wherever that is and however big that will be. Uh, so good for them. Um, but uh, I, no, and I hope I get a chance to see a little bit more of it if it pops up somewhere like on their Twitch or something in a little bit or something, right? Um, but uh, it, it was only a $15 pay-per-view, so at least there was that. Um, I wish their main shows were that much. I might buy some. Uh, but anyway, we've had that conversation a couple weeks ago, though. Thank you, Riz. Uh, Riz plays games on the Twitch. Yes, and I do have one more announcement. One more announcement, Sorg. Um, there's a lot of rumors going around. I am Calix. What? It's been. It's, I'm Calix. You are Calix. You're a Calix. I am Calix. 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 C A L L U X. So you're a Dungeons and Dragons bad guy. Are you an evil sorcerer of some type? Are you talking about the Twitch AEW Dungeons and Dragons thing that's happening tonight? No. No? Okay. Talking about the pro wrestler sword. You filmed him once. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> Sorg's probably He's lost track. He's the really big guy with the mask. With the mask. That narrows it down. With, how wow. many Chikara Remember, shows have I been okay, to, Riz? Okay, well, the guy with the mask? Are you kidding yes, me? That is me. What? Okay. That is right, me. You're, 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 I just looked it up. Are we talking Calix the Castinator? That is me. I am Calix the Castinator. I don't know what's happening right now. Okay. Sorg, I want this posted. Dave Podner, ProfPod on the Twitter. Yep, on Twitter, on the Instagram, pretty much everywhere. Uh, luckily, I've, I've been around long enough. I got pretty much ProfPod everywhere, luckily. There you go. <laughs> Lots of yelling right. and screaming on Twitter. And thank you for joining us wherever you may be and whatever social platform you have been. Please, if you like what's going on, please share the show. Please hit up the Patreon and support us if you would like to. You do get, you do get some stuff. If you miss the live streams or sometimes we record stuff off live stream, that will be on the Patreon and you'll get notifications of all the shows we do throughout the week uh, in the Wrestling Mayhem Show universe. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.